The Fanatic Best of Podcasts are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. B-Pod Studios. Anthony Gargano show on 97.5 The Fanatic. Having baseball back, I get to talk to people that I love. And one of the great treasures of Philadelphia. I mean, I mean, we've been doing this a long time. I've been loving number 10 since he went deep in a hole, man. He covered all that ground. He was way better than Dave Concepcion. All right. And he deserved to be in the All-Star game, not Concepcion. He's my man, the great Larry Boa. Bo! What's up, Ant? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Ready to get going here. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> See, you get me fired up. All right. <laughs> You're just here, it gets me. I feel like it's baseball season, man. Yeah, they had a, you know, I was very impressed with spring training. Uh, the lineup's good. We're going to score runs. I, I guarantee that. And I like our rotation. And our bullpen's much better than it was last year. So we're in a tough division, and I really believe that we're going to have to win the division because these teams are going to beat up on each other. Yeah. And, uh, and I think this in the West, you're probably going to have L.A. and San Diego. And in the center, you're probably going to have St. Louis and Milwaukee's pretty good. So, you know, we have to win our division, which I think we're very capable of doing. Every team has a few warts, but uh, this team – like I said, we're going to score a lot of runs. It's going to make it, it's going to make it easier on our pitching. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm excited by it. I, I, first of all, I think Dombrowski came in, and he's such a professional general manager. And like right off the bat, he fixed things. Right, he got he got real arms to come into the pen and goes, all right, like, like let's let, let's kind of reshape this thing a little bit." And so you know the bullpen's going to be better, and and I agree with you. They look, they made sure to get JT back in the fold, and I think Bryce is still one of the most like under underrated superstars. And we don't even talk about him as much. I mean, he's a great ball player, so I I, I share your enthusiasm. Well, he had he had a great spring. You know, he swung the bat exceptionally well, and in reference to Dombrowski, he came in and was very active. You know, he saw what we had to do. He did it. And I really don't believe that he's done. I mean, if we're, I'm not going to say if, when we're in this thing in July, I think he'll add what needs to be put, brought on into the, uh, into the roster. There's no question about that. He wants to win. He's not into the rebuild or, uh, you right. know, he's not into that. He came over here for one reason. And that's to win this division. And he made some big, big moves during the winter and we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Now, tell me about Bohm. What, what do you think? What do you think? I'm excited about him. I, I think he's going to give us some good power. I, I love that kid. I, I think Bohm's the best hitter on our team. I'm talking about batting yep. average. Yeah. This guy hates striking out. He's got a great two strike approach. You better not shift on him because he'll hit a ground ball to second in a minute. He's really, really improved at third base. You can give him the credit. He's worked very hard. Uh, you know, when I first saw him at Wichita State, I said, there's no way this guy can play third. And he's changed my mind right away. I mean, he's, wow. like I said, through hard work and uh, his dedication to being the best he could possibly be. Uh, he, I don't know where uh, Joe's going to hit him, but eventually, eventually, this guy's going to be a three or four hitter in a lineup. I know you don't want to put that kind of pressure on him after his first year, and I don't know where Joe's going to hit him, probably fifth, maybe four. I don't know. But this guy, I like to see him come up with men on base because he's going to put the ball in play. It's funny. I, I thought I said I said this to Andrew. I said we were talking about the lineup, and I, and I, I go, man, I like the kid in third. I just think he screams yeah. like he he looks like a number three hitter to me all day long. And I always like JT in the five spot because I always thought like he's a perfect five hole hitter, and Bone would be great in a three hole. I, I agree with you. It is a lot. First yeah, full you, year like this. I mean, but if you, the way you have it set up and you put Harper in between him and JT. I know. It, it's very difficult because, you know, that, that new rule, you have to pitch the three yes. hitters. And uh, that wouldn't make it very difficult. But I don't know what Joe's thought process is on putting Bowman in the three hole right away. Now, yeah. could that happen during the season? Yeah, very yeah. easily. Uh, I know Harp likes hitting third. 
so right, I would say starting off tomorrow, I think Harp will be hitting third. I, <laughs> I really don't know what Joe's thoughts are on the lineup. He can go a bunch of ways. There's, there's so much versatility. These guys really, they can hit anywhere in the lineup. And you can, you know, if they, we happen to go into a little lull offensively, you could change the lineup, put guys in different batting order. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but uh, the other guy that, that was impressive this spring was McCutcheon. Uh, he's oh, yeah? Moving around, he's moving around really good. He cut off a ball the other day that last year would have gone to the wall. Uh, he's swinging the bat exceptionally well. So, uh, like I said, I, I'm excited about this team. I think we're going to score a lot of runs. And as you well know, Ant, if you get in the playoffs and you got to go against Nola, Wheeler, and Eflin, hey, I'll put them up against anybody, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm with you. The great Larry Boa with us on the Comcast Business Hotline. Bounce forward. I love I love Wheeler, man. I love Wheeler. that dude, man. He he's he's got grace. He's a great. The, his ball just moves. It's nasty. He, he's got unbelievable. He's got a two seamer and a four seamer, but he's got ice water in his veins. You never see him get upset out there, no matter if he gets a bad call or you make a mistake behind him. He just gets the ball and throws it, and uh, he can hit spots. It's not like he gets out there and throws as hard as he can. He can go in. He can go out. He can go up and down. Uh, I was really happy with Noel. I saw that. I don't know if you guys, if that game was on TV, but he uh, pitched against the Yankees. Yeah, yeah. Six innings. He was and tremendous. And it was their A lineup. Yeah. It was their A lineup. They threw everybody at him. I think he gave 12 up 12 strikeouts or 11 strikeouts yeah. he had. Yeah. I mean, he was on point, so. You got him uh, starting off tomorrow, and uh, again, uh, I, I'd be very disappointed, very disappointed, if we stay healthy and don't and aren't in the playoffs. I would say it's a dud. Uh, wow. I, I mean, that's how much I think this team wow. has a chance to get in the playoffs. It's the Anthony Gargano Show on ninety-seven five The Fanatic. Hey, it's Cause DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC, is offering 264 to 1 odds on a knockout in the first round during UFC 264's main event. Bet $1 on McGregor or Poirier to win by first round knockout. If it happens, you win $264. Download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code Fanatic when you sign up. That's code Fanatic only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sports. For details, gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler. 97 5 The Fanatic. Yeah, because I, I, I'm with you in that like, you got a really good rotation. I mean, you know, if you look at it, pitching depth, starting pitching depth might be a little depth. bit of a dicey, yeah. which, you know, you look at the trade deadline, you go, all right, the two things I may need would be starting pitching depth and maybe another outfield, another bat. But Right. I'm, I'm, but and that's that's how you're supposed to do it, where you can tweak and not have right. any kind of major overhaul. Well, but you know, every team's going to be in that that uh, that position as far as pitching because they got to watch. Obviously, innings they didn't play last year. Uh, I would say that would probably be our weakness depth wise. We need those guys to stay healthy. But on the other hand, you got a guy like Howard sitting down there, and uh, you know he had that uh, a little setback in spring mm-hmm. training. So he's going to go down there and get some innings in. Uh, if something should happen to one of these starters, I mean, you could plug this kid in right away. He had a pretty good spring when he was out there. Uh, I, I don't look at ERA's amp down there because the ground's hard. It's windy. Yeah. I was looking at his velocity because last year I didn't see the velocity. I watched him throw a couple uh, couple games down here. He was 95, 96. And, uh, you know, I expect him to be – he'll be up here sometime this year, whether it's – pitching out of the bullpen or maybe a starter going down or a starter needing a blow in between starts. Uh, you'll see this kid eventually before the season's over. Wow. See, the only thing that worried me was they were talking about a, a, a severe pitch count, like limiting him to a couple of innings per appearance. I, I didn't know. They were even talking about him start, like where they would have a, a, a starter, uh, you know, like a, 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 a piggyback. Yes. Yeah, you, you could do that. The, the, the big drawback about having him come up out of the bullpen, in my opinion, is when you got a kid like this, you almost have to make sure he starts the inning clean. You can't bring him in with men on base. And yeah. when you start an inning clean, 
That means he's got to know what inning he's going in. As you well know, yeah. in baseball, that could change in one inning. The other team could get four runs or you could get five runs. So it, it's going to be a touchy situation, but I think they do want him to start off maybe in the bullpen and get some innings and then go from there. Yeah, I'm with you, though. I, I don't want to screw around with this kid. Like, no. See, is it, see, one of my – let me ask you, the, the, the Kingery, right? Did – you know, I'm not I'm not blaming anybody, but come on. I mean, did 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 the kid messed up? Like, can he be uh, salvaged? You know, I, I think he can be salvaged. He, he's a good athlete. Uh, he got into some bad habits, and, and you know, he I don't even think he realized the year he hit the home run. He did not swing up at the baseball. He had he was a good line drive hitter. Yeah. He's a strong kid. He hit the ball out to he hit it to right center, left center. I still believe this kid's going to be a good baseball player, but I think they did the right thing because they were experimenting with his swing at the end there. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to be under the microscope every single at bat down there because there are going to be games down there and they're not going to be inter squad games. They're going to be playing the Yankees and the Mets, I think, triple A team. Right. So they're going to face competition down there. I don't expect him to be down there that long if, if he can get his swing together. Uh, you know, this kid, he, he, you can't strike out as much as he did in spring training. I mean, this, he was striking out close to 25% of the time. But, uh, you know, the Joe Dillon, who I think is a very good hitting instructor, had him doing a few things down there. We just ran out of time in spring training, and they didn't want to put him under the microscope here where everybody's going to grade his at-bats. So oh, he had a terrible at-bat, or he had two good ones and two bad ones. So he's going to go down there and work on it and see what happens. The great Larry Bow with us on the Comcast Business Hotline. Uh, Bo, wh- what kind of power numbers do you expect from Reese? I, I, I think Reese is going to hit in my if he stays healthy, twenty five to thirty. Okay. I, I do. I think he's going to hit twenty. I, I don't think you know people say well he's going to hit three hundred. He's not going to hit three hundred. No, you know, just I'm power sorry. here. He gets on base. He's not afraid to take a walk. The guy that I think is going to have a monster year is Harper if he stays yeah, healthy. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. I think I'm looking at 40-plus. Yes, he was, yes. Every ball he hit in spring training, he squared up. And uh, you I know, love that, dude. I got to tell you, but I love that, dude. That You know what I love about him? He's a, he's such a baseball player. Like, he loves the game. And, and he has been great. He has, ever since he's come here, I think he's been a great ambassador for the Phillies, despite all the other yeah. stuff that was going on, he was there. I mean, he he gets it, man. Yeah, he does. And he, you know, the the one thing that I liked about him right from the beginning, even when he played with Washington, because when I was on the field coaching, he knows the history of baseball. You know, a lot of these young yeah. guys coming up, they don't know who played here, they don't know what guys did. But this guy, he'll rattle off people who played here twenty, thirty, forty years ago. Uh, he just like he's a student of the game. He works hard and. uh like I said, this spring, I, I can't remember a game he didn't play where he didn't square up two or three balls every at bat. Nice. I think he's going to get a lot of walks at the beginning, but the people hitting behind him, I think will stop that because it, it's it's a long lineup, and there's really no easy outs in that lineup. So if you want to keep walking him and the guys behind him are going to get big hits, then he'll take his walks, which a lot of big home run hitters won't do. You know, they say, i got to drive this run in. If there's a man on third and they don't want to pitch to him and they're missing away or missing in, he's not afraid to take his walk and, and pass the baton down. So that's, I think, the good thing about our lineup. These guys will take walks. They're not going to try to get greedy all the time. We do need to have a better two-strike approach with men on third base and with yeah. less than two outs. Yep. I thought last year we didn't do a very good job of that. But this spring I thought we did pretty good. Give me this. All right, so I, I want Larry Boa's favorite opening day. Wow. I want you to uh, tell me your f- most favorite. It could be anything, player, manager, coach, wh- whatever it was. The one that you go, oh, that's my favorite. I love it. T- tell, give me your well, favorite. I, you know what, and, and, and it might sound corny, but it was my very first day at Connie Mack because I never got drafted. I got cut from my high school baseball team. I was signed as a. They told me you'd be a good organization guy if you didn't get higher than AAA. Uh, and the fact that standing there and listening to the national anthem and you, all those thoughts go through your head about 
Everybody said you can't do it. You won't be here. You're too small. You're too skinny. Uh, I think that opening day and, and listening to the national anthem that day was is something that that I will never ever forget. Uh, that was the best day, opening day. But the, obviously, the best in my career was the Game Six of the World Series in 1980, first ever in Philly history, and you know, beating Kansas City four games to two. But those two things stand out in my mind. But the opening day at Connie Mack was something very special. That's beautiful. I love it. Bo, you're a treasure, man. You are. You're well, the greatest, I, buddy. All right. I appreciate it. And let's see what we can do this let's summer. Let's do it, man. It's going to be a fun summer. Yeah, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. The all great right, Larry Boa. Thanks, Bo. On the Comcast Business Hotline, he's the greatest, man.